Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. March 22nd, 2024. We are just seconds after the cash close here on this Friday afternoon. S&P selling off by 10 handles. People, this is the only sell side activity we have seen throughout the course of the week. It was, uh, yeah, once again, a ripping week to the upside. Nevertheless, these indicators signal change is coming to the markets that and much more here of course on this theo trade weekend update right down to business so as i was saying moments ago a little bit of sell side activity starting to hit the marketplace quite frankly <laughs> i say sell side activity look the entire trading session was a whole lot of nothing followed by eh, meager sell side activity here. The NASDAQ still finished the session higher. The Russell, however, uh, got hammered a little bit here. But I wanna start with where I see, again, a number of indications of some big changes in the marketplace. And I'm actually gonna start with trading volumes. They're off considerably. You know, a lot of people don't look at this as like, oh, change is afoot. It's trading volumes are off. Like, who cares, right? It's trading volumes. Except, hold on, this is a Fed week, right? And the uh, the Fed, if we uh, we look back at a couple of trading sessions over here, so uh, let's go ahead and move to the daily. But <clears throat> here we are during the uh, the trading week, and what we have here is five day trading week. Uh, not a lot going on, of course, until the Fed. And the Fed, uh, the market lifted, and the S and P's were up. You know well over 100 points this week, you would expect to see some size trade, especially following the Fed. You didn't get it. And I'm starting off here inside of, again, the S&P futures. For those of you who are not familiar with the S&P futures, this is really the marketplace that uh, drives order flow. Now, the SPX is where the initiation of trade is, but the hedge is inside of the, uh, the ES. And I got to tell you, I, I look at this and I'm really going to zoom in and bring the volume up. Um, <clears throat> initially, we're just going to look at S&P volume. And the reason I'm bringing this into scope, uh, take a look at the course of this five day trading week. We were lucky to substantiate 1.3 million contracts, but the big standout is right there on the Fed day. There was no size, no size whatsoever. Now, how does that compare to a lot of other trading sessions? Well, you know, there's big volume, and I want to make this point. There's big volume back here. It doesn't really count because that's a roll. There's big volume right here, and that doesn't really count because that's a roll as well, meaning a roll in the futures contract. But Okay. You know, we can run like a volume average on here, but again, I just like to, uh, on the surface, bring this up, uh, volume throughout the course of this week. And again, today was just, it was just miserably low volume. I just can't stress it enough. It's miserably low. We barely crested over a million contracts today. You know, if you look at uh, volume though, over the last couple of days, whatever you're going into this week, that week, yeah, I've heard it all before, but take a look at volume. And this was a fairly substantial week. The S&Ps just didn't trade any size. Now, to further that off there, when I say trading volumes are off, <clears throat> what initially brought this to my attention was uh, was not the S&Ps. I noticed the S&Ps after. After what? After looking, well, <clears throat> right here. What you're looking at is an OCC report. I was actually bringing this up uh, live on Theotrade all throughout the course of the week. And I'm just going to take you into this for a couple of moments because I'm going to tell you right now, this is critically important. Okay, even if you're not that familiar with the, you know, the ES and the uh, the S&P futures, and they drive a lot of the order flow. But bottom line, this is options, and options specifically are what have driven, okay, the S&Ps to their current levels. Okay, and if you start taking a look at the volume, now we're looking at Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So I, I you know, obviously the uh, the Friday volume. <coughs> Markets just closed literally seconds ago. I don't have it. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Friday volume, it's going to be meager. Now, Friday volume should be higher because, you know, it's a expiration, of course, bigger expirations out of the SPX and bigger expiration because the equity products expire every Friday. But um, just take a look on uh, March 19th. Uh, what do we do? You're like, ah, oh, that's about 39 million contracts. Okay. Average average for March has been just shy of uh, almost 50 million. So you're off and you're off substantially in volume. Um, the one that really bothered me was right here. The one that really bothered me was the uh, the Fed day. Uh, why? 
because uh, I've 25 years doing this and I've never seen a Fed day this dead ever. Okay. Uh, I've never seen a Fed day even close to this dead. We only did 42 million contracts in a Fed day. And again, average for 2024 has been 48 million. When you're off on volume in a Fed day, you know, let's be off by two or 3%, but 10, 15% volume missing. And then of course, uh, yesterday, yesterday was also, uh, you know, some size was just missing 48 million contracts. We were basically doing average. One of the things I like to point out with that, again, that Fed day really bothered me. A little bit of follow through, of course, on uh, on Thursday. But uh, overall, the volumes, both in the S&P futures, of course, and the options marketplace are, uh, they have ceased to exist. Moreover, I took a, a very detailed look at uh, the gamma squeeze. Looks like it's actually dying out. Now, for those of you that are not aware of this, when I start talking about gamma squeezes and so forth, I'm talking about uh, like if you look at Microsoft and we open up option statistics here, and I'm actually going to take you into this, you know, take a look at some of the volume. Now, you can look at a subsect, which is called Sizzle. Sizzle is today's option volume versus the previous five trading days. Uh, Microsoft is doing no size. I mean, there's basically a one means nothing, but there's there's no heavy contract size in the calls. OK, there's nothing in there. Uh, I looked at Apple. There's no heavy contract size inside of Apple. And you should see every Friday unequivocally, the sizzle should be almost two in here. Go, why do you say that? Because equity products like an Apple and equity products like a Microsoft, they only expire once a week, right? So you should see size trading on the Friday because what a lot of traders do is they'll close stuff out on a Friday, roll it to the following Friday, but we're always rolling Friday to Friday and Friday happens to be by far and away the biggest day. You see Apple at like 1.2, it's totally dead. I looked at Amazon, okay? Amazon size in here. Didn't even hit one. It's crazy. It's really, really light. I'm telling you, this has changed. Now, Google, Google actually had a lot of news on it. Okay. Google had some call buying. Google had news. Google is up 2%. Volume was dead. Meta, shocking. Meta didn't even hit 90% of its normal volume. Tesla, also news driven in here, 1.3. Uh, last but not least, NVIDIA, which did break to the upside again today. Ah, it was the only one that actually had a sizzle. 2.1. It's the only one that actually saw call buying. Okay. Keep an eye on this for early next week. Trading volumes need to come raging back. But next week, we're coming into a four day trading week. Okay. Next Friday is closed for the holiday of none other than Good Friday. But I can't stress this enough. Okay. Something's up with the, uh, with the volumes in there. The gamma squeeze may actually be dying out. I'm not ready to call it just yet. Okay. But I am telling you right now, there is change coming in this marketplace. The other aspect that I saw that was really, in uh, in contrast, much <laughs> higher degrees of correlation. Now, this one also kind of took me by surprise. You know, after the Fed announcement, after the Fed announcement, there was high degrees of correlation to the upside. But interestingly enough, very, very low volume. Okay. Uh, throughout the course of the remainder of the week, the correlation has actually been decent, much higher than it has been. When I'm talking about correlation, like look, today, it's just a meager day to the downside, whatever, right? But uh, there's over 70 stocks actually trading to the downside. So we're getting much higher degrees of correlation. We haven't seen anything outside of 50-50. Uh, yesterday at portions of the day, yesterday at portions of the day, which uh, for those of you that do not remember uh, yesterday, we continued to pump to the upside and that popped to the upside yesterday. So a really high degrees of correlation. At one point we had 86 stocks trading. And again, it's a big move. No, unequivocally, it's a big move. In fact, you start looking at some of the moves that we've seen. Look at this, this is a 30 day one hour and I wanna zoom in some of the price action Obviously, this is a Wednesday. This is the Fed. And that's why I was so disturbed. There's, oh, there's volume after the Fed. There was nothing. The follow through was was very minimal. Okay. And some of the overnight trade is when the entire thing happened was in some of the overnight trade. There's just no size behind trade. And I cannot stress that enough. But moreover, there's just no size behind the options in there as correlation is actually picked up. Again, it's all in contrast. All of this is in contrast. So volumes are down. Uh, option volume is obviously, obviously off, especially in some of the big tech stocks. Okay, correlation is picked up. Uh, volatility in the S&P 500, uh, volatility has actually dropped, which you would expect after a Fed announcement, uh, but skew picked up 
uh, substantially. Uh, skew, uh, the recording yesterday, and again, skew is always weird to look at because skew only is calculated at the end of a trading session. But uh, look at skew, and I'll just highlight it actually closed here. So skew took off to the upside. So somebody's hedging something. By the way, heavy skew, it's out of the money puts. Okay, it's out of the money put premium versus out of the money call premium. Okay, and that is a VIX style, which is like a 30 day averaging formula. Um, what that basically implies is there are uh, puts are trading at a premium versus out of the money calls right now. It's indicative of hedging activity. So going through a lot, but look, in a week like this, where we take a you know decent look at the SPX, and again, say what you will, the SPX. Okay, traded significantly higher. I'm not trying to diminish the move at all. In fact, uh, let's embody the move for a second. We literally moved from 51.20. Okay, we're closing here on the SPX at uh, 52.34. Uh, so, as I was saying earlier, you know, what's a you know 100, 115 points amongst friends. So it's an absolutely rip move to the upside. But with that rip uh, came change. There's just no question that. Uh, a lot of things on the screen, they just simply don't look like they did. You know, the other one that's also kind of perplexing to me is in the midst of uh, some of the price action this week and the uh, the dollar is ripping back to the upside. The only thing that isn't making a big strategic move is bonds. OK, I got more questions than I do answers about that. But uh, bonds, uh, I was calling for this uh, earlier in the week, bonds reverting back to the upside. But the price action of the bonds has also been it's meager out there. There's just, you know. There's okay size in the bond market. And if you take a look at the notes, okay, the notes also traded a little bit of size. But again, volume on a Fed day inside of the notes, it's not moving. It's just not moving out there. And I got to tell you, categorically speaking, I am very bothered by that. Now, as I was saying, early next week, early next week, you really want to have some focus on stocks like NVIDIA. NVIDIA, okay, and I'm, I'm Special mention for NVIDIA because NVIDIA is what okay has really led what we kind of termed the dispersion trade or what some people are calling like gamma squeeze. By the way, those there's one and the same, right? Gamma squeeze is is basically people rush out, they buy calls, uh, the hedging activity actually drives the stock higher, yada yada yada. Yeah, that's indicative of a gamma squeeze, but the trade behind it is really a dispersion. Anyway, you want to watch something like NVIDIA, because NVIDIA, what's interesting about it is <clears throat> as the stock was exploding to the upside, the volatility was also exploding to the upside. When the stock subsided, the volatility subsided. And the one thing I've been saying all along, if NVIDIA doesn't cool out, the volatility can't subside. But the moment the volatility subsides, it might make it advantageous once again to come in here and rush the market and buy calls. So NVIDIA is going to be of critical importance literally early next week. Like, you know, you kick off the trading day on Monday. If NVIDIA doesn't start rocking, okay, not only is change of foot, NVIDIA right now is, that's what held these S&Ps together today because you just saw the advanced decline line. That is not pretty, okay? It isn't. And NVIDIA is literally, well, that's what held the market, you know, uh, up pretty much throughout the last couple of weeks in here. But as soon as it flattened out, the market kind of flattened out again. NVIDIA, though, catching a bid. Uh, and the second that NVIDIA caught a bid, you'll see it's implied volatility starting to uptick once again in here. Anyway, NVIDIA, well, it's going to be tested very early on uh, next trading you know, week, which is of course going to be on uh, on Monday, right out of the gate. We'll keep a good eye on that. Now, completely different direction. All right. So we again talked about trading volume, some really big contrasting kind of trade. Volumes are down. The gamma squeeze could be dying out. Correlation has really picked up. Uh, as I said, skew actually jumped, but volatility dropped over there. That's okay. The last component. Uh, that I'm going to keep my eye on, uh, especially in the next, you know, few weeks. This is a little bit more longer term. This is not like let's look Monday like Nvidia, but I was very, okay, interested in the sheer number and magnitude of a couple of luxury retailers that I got annihilated this week. Now it started with Gucci, which. For those of you who don't know, Gucci's not even like, you know, uh, listed here, but 
Okay, it didn't stop there. Now, by the way, would you call Nike a luxury item? I don't know. If you pay like 150 bucks for a pair of shoes, that's uh, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I'll start with Nike. It was just retailers that have been somewhat impervious. If you look back over like the last five years, Nike hasn't necessarily been impervious, but uh, Nike is notable because its earnings, it's not good. Okay. It's not good at all. They're down about 7%. You know, I started with Nike in here, but that's not the one that, you know, was kind of disconcerting. I think Lululemon was also rather disconcerting. This is down almost 16%. That people has been, okay, impervious pretty much to everything. And if you look back over five years, it's had some ups and downs, but generally speaking, coming out of the COVID crash, okay, it's just been spectacular. Uh, and I've actually had some shorts on here. You can actually see some old notes. I shorted it at 405, then came down substantially, but it exploded back over to 500. Today's move, though, decimating shares. You're like, ah, who cares? It's a one-off. But it's not a one-off because Nike also took a hit, also had earnings. Uh, that also then reminded me of looking at this, okay, which is luxury items, jewelry, Gucci, Lululemon, you know, people that actually spend money. This is actually a, a jeweler that's found in uh, a lot of malls and so forth, uh, getting annihilated as well. Okay. And actually from uh, some of the recent highs, and again, I'll put this uh, right in front of you here from some of the recent highs, okay, is now off almost uh, 20%. So well worth noting, there were some very key stocks. All right. Last but not least, like uh, Louis Vuitton. Okay. And you know Louis Vuitton didn't necessarily have earnings uh, and is also starting to see some slippage in here. Okay, There's some fear and a little bit of loathing, if you will, inside of some of the luxury items. Now, uh, again, why we're looking at it, why I'm specifically looking at it, signs that the uh, you know retail is finally cracking. And moreover, if you look at stuff like XRT, which is a retail... ETF. And this retail ETF, though, it doesn't embody like, you know, stuff like luxury items, but you have to be concerned about the luxury items. Anyway, XRT, but me personally, I, I don't like, I looked at XRT. And when I say I looked at it, I looked actually at some of the components of XRT, didn't really do it for me. I looked a lot more at XLP. Okay. And this is consumer staples, consumer staples. This thing has been a freight train to the upside. Of course, some of the leaders in there have been none other than like Walmart, Okay, Walmart has just been a freight train. Target, I mean, unbelievable. Target actually gapping a little bit higher. Um, the reason that I'm bringing up some of the luxury items, okay, and it always starts that way and it always ends up here. Okay, and I also noticed today, I think it was uh, Buy and Below, okay, Buy and Below annihilated this week. I mean, just totally and completely decimated this week. Stock's down another, you know, like three, four percent, but. Uh, Again, that's that's a uh, well. Here, you want to see the uh, the drop just this week alone? And you're dropping uh, almost 20% on the week. Okay, there's retail, and it's it's just in pockets right now. But pay attention, pay very careful attention. As I was saying, I think there might be some trade opportunities. I just don't know if the trade opportunity is like, oh, let's get on it next week, or do we want to push it a little bit further out in time? This may be a phenomenal opportunity expressly inside of uh, what we term catapult. Uh, in catapult, I may be able to pull off uh, XLP and do it against like the S&Ps. So we take this, this big wicked bearish position in XLP and we'll finance it in the S&Ps. But if retail is coming off, it's gonna end up in the uh, in uh, consumer staples, it'll end up in the XRT uh, and I'm gonna be there for it. Okay. Uh, I also want to show you an interesting move today that kind of also caught me off guard. One of the biggest moves uh, higher this week, which is pretty shocking off the Fed news, was the uh, XLF. The XLF pulled back dramatically today, um, right back to the upper edge of the expected move. And I say dramatically, look, it's a 1% sell-off. You haven't seen a 1% sell-off. I just want you to look objectively. Uh, you've seen maybe like one 1% sell-off anywhere in the last couple of weeks in here. And I just want to also make the point, the move in the financials, okay, 34% to the upside, okay, without really any pullback. And the irony of that, when you zoom in, 
Today's move actually looks rather substantial versus some of the price action that you've seen as of late. I mean, again, shockingly bullish in here today, seeing a bit of a reversal. And it's the uh, financials coming off along with energy, which was down nominally, that uh, really caused, if you will, the advanced decline line to, uh, well, to be ugly. All right. Last thing I cover, and I always cover this because I think it's instrumental, okay, is the uh, SPX. And uh, I cover this each and every weekend, you know, right into the weekend video, right at the end of it. This SPX is, it's instrumental because it's handicapping what next week is going to look like. And, you know, last weekend, last weekend I was telling you like, like, you know, look, the SPX, expect a lot of like volume, expect a lot of volatility in here. Last week we had an $81 move. $81 move being priced in over here. So, uh, you know, plus or minus 81 bucks. That was last week. Actual move, about 115. So we breached, okay, expected move. So where do we fall? Outside the upper edge of the expected move. Uh, I'm making a little bit of a deal of that this this weekend. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. You kind of zoom in on a year-to-date basis. One thing that we saw a tremendous amount of last year is breaches. There's one two, three, this would be the fourth breach this year. Well, statistically speaking, you're supposed to be inside there about six, 7% of the time, yada, yada, yada. Um, and that's, we're falling in line with that. Like last year, okay, it was like the year of breaches constantly in here, but um, it is it is notable because this is a very considerable move outside of expected when you're supposed to get an $80 move and you get like $115, okay? That's not missing by a little, that's missing by a lot. What's the next week looking like? So we already know that we're coming into what? A four day trading week, a four day trading week, but we also know it's end of the quarter. So you should see bigger volume into the end of the quarter. The expected move, basically $54. And based on today's time right now, that's it. That is the expected move. The real expected move is going to be about 54, we'll call it 11, okay? 54.11. But reminder, we don't have a Fed announcement like we just had this last week, okay? We don't have any of that. There's not, you know, in terms of economic news, um, you know, people always want to look at the calendar and so forth. Hey, by all means, let's, let's you know, you go into the calendar, you push forward to next week and start looking around. Look, every week is filled with some economic data. Remember, Friday, the markets are closed, but every week is filled with, you know, pretty heavy economic calendar. You're getting some durable goods and so forth, but the market volatility right now is going to be a little bit lower. It is going to be holiday trade late in the week. I caution you, though, with a $54 expected move, do not think for a second the S&Ps can't rip that apart because you had multiple moves in one trading session that were beyond $50 throughout the course of this week. A lot to think about. Again, early next week, all eyes are to volume, all eyes are to the gamma squeeze, because if it fades, so goes the marketplace. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.